So Chelsea preached. Um, Chelsea preached. Where did you preach? You preached at a church with Paul, right? Church. In, Qu in Cuernavaca? Yeah. How'd that go? That, that was like, oh, that was good. You preached good. I remember yeah, that. that, that I wasn't church, there, but. Yeah, the church, I guess, didn't evangelize at all, didn't go out in the streets, so. They picked the right preacher to come in. Yeah, <laughs> so it was definitely appointed. They picked the right preacher to was come. It was just a relief to They picked to the know, right preacher to yeah, come. Yeah, I was very relieved that my message applied. And, yeah, so people got wrecked, and the worship leader saw Jesus, and he was just wrecked. Like, we saw Jesus in front of him, and he was like, it was, he was a hot mess. He was just like, it was a life, you could tell it's going to be a life changing thing. They come thing. unglued. Yeah. When people look like someone took the bones out of them. Yeah. After God touched them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the team was amazing. They were laying hands on everyone. People were just out on the fire of God. It was, it was awesome. A man got healed. Um, it was great. Hallelujah. It was great. Um, but the one testimony I want to share was... Did Paula was, translate for you? Yeah, she did. Did she, she do her karate chop screams? She did in the beginning because there's warfare in the middle of service. Okay. This lady's a... <laughs> she's going to come here. and uh, She's she, amazing. <laughs> she's like, Kah! She went like, to and me. And it would I be ridiculous. Back. It would be ridiculous if people weren't flying, right? Like, I ran. <laughs> like, I ran. I was if, like, ah! If people go flying, do whatever you want. <laughs> They're not flying. Just shut up, please. Yeah, right? It's, it's great. But they were flying. Yeah, so. she was a great translator, too. She was really she? kept up. Yeah. All right. She'll be here. So. Yeah, she's awesome. So uh, we, I went with her and Brent Shabba. to the brothel, and she's in charge of the brothel. Ah. She's been doing um, no, wait, wait, wait. She's not in charge of the brothel. She's in charge, she's of, charge the of the brothel ministry. Ministry. I'm sorry. There's a yeah. difference. Brothel ministry. There's a difference. But speaking of There's that. There's a difference. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's in charge yeah. of the brothel yeah. Yeah. ministry. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank Let's you for having that me. a little yes. bit. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's amazing. She keeps them women in line yeah. with the yeah. karate chop. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. She's been doing it for nine years in Texas, so oh, she's wow. really awesome. Mm. And so we went with her. Uh, Brent and I went with her. And um, the first lady we saw, I actually knew her from the last couple times, which was very encouraging to me. She recognized me. You saw. Oh, so we went to the brothel one time, and Chelsea was ministering to this woman, and she, they became Facebook friends. <laughs> and they kind of followed up. So the first lady I saw was her. And she's like, hi. Oh, I'm like, hi. Oh. It was great. So... It was really cool. She's trying to get out, um, but her dad got cancer, and she had a um, she had a st she well she felt like she was supposed to start working again, but she's trying to get out. So pray for her. What's her name? Uh, uh, Edith. Let's pray for her. Pray for her right now. Uh, Father, we lift get up Edith right now, Jesus. You got a job for freedom, her, Jesus. Freedom, God, miracle, money over her. her, Jesus. You got a job for freedom. her, Jesus. You got a job. Freedom for her. that you would give her a job, Lord. A job, guide her path, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, give her courage, God. Give her Amen. boldness to get out, God. Amen. Let her have faith to get out. In Amen. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Um, so uh, we went up. To, so there was a manager lady that manages all the brothel rooms. So they pay her, they pay her rent, and we went up to her, Brent and I and the Paola. And she's like an older woman. She's like in her 60s, which is odd. You wouldn't think it was an older, like, grandma, but it was. And so we sorry, walked. Sorry, folks, in your 60s. <laughs> but you just, like, you wouldn't no think, like, this no great offense. gangster No offense. Lady. We believe you could run a brothel. We really do. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just think you would, you would think it was just, like, some mean gangster old, you know, Dude, older guy. Yeah. yeah. No, so anyways. No. So um, she was there with her, some guy, his baby assistant or whatever. So we um, went up to her. Uh, Paul no, no, uh, knows her, and we so we laid hands on her, and I just felt something God was going to do something in her heart. And then uh, Brent had a word of knowledge that she was carrying all this burden on her. I bet. So, um, so we prayed for her, and she started feeling freer. And then we asked her if she had any pain, and she had pain coming in her arms, like both arms. And uh, we prayed freedom over her. The pain went totally away. <laughs> this is the manager. The manager of the brothel. The manager of the brothel. She was, like, so shocked. Like, she was just so happy. She kept feeling her arms. She was, like, really shocked. And we asked the guy that was next to her to come over. Meanwhile, there's a police officer that's guarding her, and the brothel is illegal. Right. So that's even just a crazy circumstance yeah. to be in. So um, we preached the gospel to the guy, and he, get, he thought he was saved, but, you know, we told him the gospel. But then Chelsea showed up. Go ahead. And we told him that it's undeserving. <laughs> 
and that you can't earn it. And we just told him. And he gave, and so he gave his life to Jesus, and the manager gave his, her life to Jesus. Come on. Oh, man, there was a You want to give the second part, you do that, but. All right, so I'll just give a different one. So yeah. there was a time where we went to the marketplace. It was me, Mikey, and Michael. And then we were going to meet up with his friend. She's like, oh, I have a friend here. Let's go meet with her. Turns out she's not there. But as we pass to go to her store, two stores down, pastor's favorite worship song comes on. Holy, holy, yeah. Are, yeah. that song in Spanish. So we're like, oh, we should go there and pray for him, pray for his business. So his friend turns out he's not there. We go back, pray for the business. And he's like, oh, this is my parents' place. This is crazy because I saw you guys have dinner last night in the marketplace. And I wanted to say hi, but I was working. And that's actually my aunt's store, too, that you guys were eating at. And then after... Testimony. We're getting into the testimony. Yeah. Ahead, and then... Yeah. With that, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So people, after people, that, after that, so we prayed for him. <laughs> and we were like, so what do you need prayer for? He's like, I just finished a course. And I'm trying to get a job at the fair, Federal Electricity facility there and it's really hard to get in so while we were praying for him I had like a vision that he was like Joseph and that um God was going to give him a lot of favor in small places and Mikey got the same word too like a lot of favor he saw him going through doors and like really humbling himself and God's grace and glory just came down and he started crying he was like I can't believe this just yesterday I was asking God to speak to me audibly and I needed direction and I just wanted to hear his voice in the next day you answered like God is so great and Amen. God just he the whole point of this is that he cares about his children and yeah. he will answer Amen. anything that you guys have so, Sylvie, is this your first mission trip? This is my first mission trip. Yeah, did you have a good time? I had a wonderful time. It was awesome. It was awesome, right? Saw God do neat stuff? Amazing stuff. I wanted to see miracles, and I saw them. You saw them. Plural. Yes. Plural. Yes. We have a funny joke around here. Like, uh, we, we were coming back from one of our mission trips in Nicaragua, and uh, there was another team there leaving at the same time. And we were just like, hey, what'd you guys see? You know? And they're like, well, we painted this place, and... We're like, oh, that's, that's awesome. And like we told, we were talking about one of our stories. And like, you saw a miracle? We're like, yeah, like today. Like every day, everywhere we went, we saw miracles. So, so I'm glad you saw miracles. Um, I have more marketplace stories. So we prayed for this man in a wheelchair. And the obvious thing that you would Why did you pray for him? Because he was in a wheelchair or did somebody have a word? No, we just felt called to pray for him. Did the wheelchair call? Or did it? <laughs> well, let me get to that Go ahead, part. go ahead. Okay, because... You don't, you, we only the, have so much time. The, the go, wheel, ahead. No, the, go ahead, no, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You're doing good. You're doing good. Uh, You're doing good. The wheelchair might make you think that you should pray for pain, but instead we felt to pray for his relationships. Go ahead. And That's so good. That's we were good. praying for his relationships, and we asked him, is there anything else specifically you would like us to pray for? And he said, no, that's it right there. My children abandoned me, and I felt disconnected. And he, he said, can you follow me? And he starts rolling his wheelchair, and he's like, follow me. I have someone who I need you to pray for so that she would also be healed. And so we went to pray for this woman who had fallen off of a jitney, a, a micro boost. And she, her back was messed up. Her... Um, her, her legs were messed up, her, um, her ankles, she had all this pain. She said that her, uh, they told her that she had had incredible nerve damage. And we prayed for her and all of her pain started to dissipate. <laughs> so we prayed for her again and we asked her um, if, there, if she had forgiven the, the driver. And she said, no, she hadn't forgiven him. And so we prayed that she would forgive him, and we went through that with her. And we prayed one more time for healing. And she said that she felt incredibly relieved that something had been lifted Come off on. of her spiritually. Let me ask you a real quick, let me ask you a real quick question. Uh, do, you, do you minister to people for healing in their bodies a lot? No. No? no. no. That, that wasn't like something you did a lot no. before you went on the trip? No. Did you see people get healed on the trip when I you did. prayed for them? I did. Pretty fun, yeah? It was fun. We were praying on Friday night, El Noche de Fuego, and you were praying, we were praying for people that the Holy Spirit would come into them and remove their spiritual wounds, um, have them see themselves as God sees them, um, that Shabba. they would see themselves perfect and accepted, and they were falling on the ground, <laughs> knocked out, again and again and again. <laughs> so Brent, this was your first mission trip with us, yeah? 
You got to talk in the mic. It there. was. It was. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and um, and uh, uh, so I'm not sure what you were even expecting. Um, and uh, but I know you minister in the jail. You got to talk into the microphone again. Yes. Yeah. See, yes, Brent's in seminary, but there's certain things they don't teach in seminary. Like when they give you one of these, you got to keep it here yeah. and talk into it. So. <laughs> Uh, Brent, Brent is actually in seminary right now I am. and um, doing well. Uh, we got to talk some seminary talk on the way. Um, they probably didn't teach you about some of the stuff you saw this week, though, in seminary, did they? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Why don't you share something with us today? God did so many amazing miracles. It was kind of challenging for me to limit it to one, possibly two. There we yeah. go. Right there. We're going right. to keep it right there. That's your zone right there. So... I'm going to start with the, the hospital at Hohutla. So Kelly, myself, and Macau, one of the missionaries from Kaleo, are walking into this hospital. We're walking up to the, the check-in counter where you hand in your driver's license. And as I put my driver's license on the table, I begin to feel this like severe pain down the right side of my, my stomach and also in my lower right side of the back. And then I'm also having like shortness of breath to the point of like, I'm leaning over the desk because I'm in such pain. I'm like, all right, this has got to be a word of knowledge because it's clearly not my pain. That or you're at the right place. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Or I'm going to get a bed. Absolutely. So God couldn't have made this this word of knowledge any more clear. Right. So as Kelly, myself, and Mikhail start tracking down into the hospital, the first room we go into... Uh, we get a diagnosis from, from the guy in there, and he says, I have liver damage due to alcoholism. I have an issue with my kidney, which is affecting his lower back, and he's also in such pain that he's having shortness of breath. Come on. So I'm like, God couldn't have made it more obvious that it was for this guy. So I take his hand, I begin to pray, and I feel compelled by Holy Spirit to touch the, the right side of his, his rib cage where the, most of the pain is um, residing. So as I place my, my left hand on the right side of his rib cage, I begin to feel this, this mass like tracking down in his stomach on the inside of his skin. And it begins to form almost when, like a, a baseball. When you say tracking down, what does that mean? It's like moving. So I'm ha- I have my hand wow. on his stomach, and the, the, the mass is beginning to form on the inside, and it's now like forming a ball, and it's beginning to push on the inside of his stomach. And Kelly's watching this, his stomach pulsate. And my hand's, like, going up and down like this, and the guy has no idea what's going on. So to make a long story no, short. No, don't make it long. Don't right. make it short. This right. is good. Go, we got to so, hear about the pulsating bulge. Come on. So to be honest, it freaked me out a little bit. It, it was pretty, pretty intense. So I declare healing in Jesus' name. That, that ball just disappears. It eliminates. But then I, feel, I still feel a little bit of pain in my lower right side of the back. So I'm like, all right, there's a little pain. And Mikel, our our translator, confirms that there was a little bit of pain in the lower right side. So again, I pray, and that pain's completely gone. Come on. It it was so, so crazy. And Mikel's going to follow up with the guy to make sure that everything's, like, restored. He's completely healed. But the craziest part is they were feeling the the financial burden of him going into uh, surgery the following day. It was going to be, like, 1,000 pesos. And they no longer have to worry about him going to surgery because he's restored. So. And I'll share one more testimony. So Chris and I are praying for a lady uh, after Pastor gave a word for people that are having trouble hearing. And the, the hearing in her left ear is completely blocked. So Chris Oglansky and I are praying over this lady. She begins to feel crackling in her left ear. And then she feels a liquid sliding into her throat. And at this point, she's hawking. She's, like, trying to get it out. She has no idea what it is. But she's like, I think it's coming from my left, my left ear. And her left ear completely opens. She's still trying to hawk this stuff out. And God completely opened her ear. So the bulge was moving. Yep, the bulge was moving. I felt it. I couldn't tell where it was coming from in his body, but I know it was all becoming a collection. And the only thing I could think of is I was praying to God prior to the trip and during the trip. I really want to empathize with people's pain and yeah. have a deeper yeah, empathy for people. And that was literally like a tangible feeling of, of somebody, tangible, somebody's huh? pain. And it was actually moving. It was, it was a ball crazy. moving under him. That's, you'll empathize that way, huh? Yep. And so her ear, she couldn't hear, and then she felt something run down, and then she could hear. Yep. That's pretty good, yeah? 
Amen. Give it for Brent, everybody. Wow. So I have a testimony from the first place that we went to go do street ministry. How many testimonies could you give, do you think? I have a testimony, like, for every five minutes yeah. on this trip. But my favorite one is this one. Were you there when they prayed for the kitchen staff at the hospital? The kitchen staff? No, I was in the maternity wing. At the hotel. Oh, kitchen. Why did I think hospital kitchen? No idea. Okay. Come okay. on, you got to interpret what I'm saying okay. by the spirit. <laughs> okay. By the spirit, people. By the spirit. <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> were one I of you there? I, were one I, of you there? I walked in oh, and they were all on the floor. Okay, so yeah. we prayed for the kitchen staff. They weren't saved. They got saved. They were on the floor. Yeah. But go ahead. So uh, the first place we went to go do street ministry, all the local missionaries, they were like, so we brought you here because we believe you guys are like a hammer and uh, you guys can really break down some The witchcraft stuff. neighborhood. The witchcraft neighborhood. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. That and was so awesome. they're like, okay, if you're really, really bold and on fire for Jesus, go this way. If you're a little like, nah, you'll go this way. So my team, we have Roger, Brent, and Paola, but we go this way. <laughs> and and uh, the, like two seconds after we went that way, we met uh, this dude, and we asked if we could pray for him or his family, and he was like, yeah, me and my mom are sick. And we're like, all right, is your, is your mom in this neighborhood? And he was like, yeah, I'll take you to her. So we go this way. <laughs> and, and, and so like the D... <laughs> And to the deepest part of, like, the witchcraft neighborhood. And she's in the back. He goes to get her. We're all praying in tongues. There's lots of, like, stray cats, and there's no stray cats in Mexico. They're only in this area. And, uh, and so we're like, okay, Jesus. And uh, I got a word of knowledge that he needed prayer for his job as well. And uh, we asked him what was going on with his mom. And he said that she would have bouts of anger. And it got so bad that his wife and kids actually left him. And he owns the house that he lives in, and his mom's staying there, so he's staying there. And so we also prayed for that. Um, and when the mom came out, she, she looked miserable. Like, she was rough. And uh, Paolo translated that she had bipolar disorder. And I was like, all right, this is a divine opportunity because I used to have bipolar disorder. God healed me. Come so on. So we're going to heal you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, so we prayed for her. She starts crying. She rededicates her life. And then we also lead her in forgiveness for her mom and whole family. And uh, just like the people told her all this stuff that happened to her was because of things that she did. And we're like, that's a lie. And so we broke all that off. And then as we go to pray for her son, she's praying behind us. Like She's praying with us. Come on. And uh, she, you could tell she was completely changed. She was smiling, happy, looked lighter. And uh, so we started praying for the son. And um, like I said, we had a word that we need to pray for his job. Brent saw construction. And he's like, I can't get this out of my mind. Like, are, are you in construction? And he was like, I can't. Like, I used to, but I got sick and stuff. And um, so we prayed for that in his job. And I started seeing that he was like, God was the architect of the family, and he was the builder. And he had to, like, build up and support his family and like good bring word. it back together. And so we prayed for him. It was good. And then he came to Noche de Fuego wow. Friday night Yeah. to sell. Like he had a ton of purses that he's been selling on the street because. Right. Um, Brent said, if you, if, you, if, yeah, I, if you come to Noche de Fuego, I'll buy a purse off of you. Yeah. And so he came to just sell one purse, but he bought like, he brought all of the purses. And uh, he answered the altar call and was on the ground for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it, it, he got healed of whatever he had. Like, yeah. they prayed. I don't know. I don't rem I didn't pray for him at Noche de Fuego, but he got healed. And so after service, like, we had prayed that his business would multiply and that he would be able to sell all that stuff. And he sold like 50 purses. Like, Praise God. He sold like a million of them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hola, todo mundo. <laughs> so tons of miracles, um, tons of miraculous things that God did. One specific thing that Jesus did, which totally wrecked me. On a night, Chelsea was preaching. She preaches fire, by the way. Shout out to Chelsea. Um, that it came ministry time. Um, we're all just going out, doing our thing. And there was a one guy, his name was David. He was wearing like a red sweatshirt. 
And I'm like, hey, man, like, what can I pray for you for? He's like, oh, like, I got an accident. Um, I fractured my hand. His this is a good one. Was, his hand, this is a his pretty hand good was, like, right completely here. jacked up. Like, he couldn't even give me a high five. I'm like, his hand was just like this to give me a high five. So then Chelsea and I were praying for this guy. I'm like, on a scale of 1 to 10, where's your pain at? He's like, oh, my pain's like at a 7. It still hurts. Not really a lot of mobility. All right, we're going to pray again. We're going to see God do miracles because he did miracles before. We prayed again. It came down to a 2. And then Chelsea just kept ministering. And then Brent came over. I'm like, hey, what's Brent, up, Brent? Brent is the word of knowledge. Brent has He's been seeing some stuff on this trip. So this guy, David, you, just sitting you, you, here. Y'all need to have, just invite Brent out to lunch. Invite Brent, just man. Ask just ask him. Ask him for some stories. This man was he, walking around with a sledgehammer. Yeah, and just, just going after oh it. Oh, my gosh. So, dude, David's just staying there receiving. Brent comes up and just puts his hand on his shoulder just like this. This dude feels electricity to go all throughout his body to his hand. God's hand completely healed. No pain. No pain whatsoever. And mobility. Right? Mobility was back. But wait, there's more. But wait. <laughs> About three minutes later, the dude comes up to me and prays, like, guys, come here. So we walk over. He's like, how do you guys operate in this, uh, this energy? What do you guys? And we're like, dude, it's not us. It's Christ in us flowing through us that heals you. This guy, backstory to this guy, David, he was searching, like, every type of religion to find God. Like, he was literally going after, going after it. So the point of it, man, no matter where you are in life, God's going to find you. He's going to touch come you. On. He's going to heal you. He's going to encounter you. Amen. You remember one more healing? You have one more healing testimony? Yeah. One more healing testimony. <clears throat> more, um, we're in more. the marketplace. Wow. And um, Shaba. So, uh, I don't know. Is Cassandra here? <laughs> What's up, Cassandra? So Cassandra was here. Um, we saw a dude walking. You can't he tell had, that guy. He had, you can't tell him. I'm going to talk about him later. All right. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, that's that guy. I got a picture and everything. Um, Actually, no, no. There's a guy. There's a picture of a guy with crutches. Put him up. Okay, go ahead. All right, so this dude, check him out. Um, he had one crutch. He had one crutch, one and, one crutch cane. and one cane. So That's how he had to walk. Me yeah, it was Mexico. It's, it's really bad down there. One crutch um, and we one cane. We don't know if he needed two crutches and only have one. We don't know exactly, but he yeah, was walking with a crutch He was cane. walking, and then I'm like, Cassandra, just go, let's go after this guy. We prayed for this dude. Well, here, here's the thing. Cassandra right. had a word of knowledge, but she was terrified <laughs> to do anything with it. And we're like, today's the day, Cassandra. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Today's the day. Like, what do you think? She goes, I think I have a knee, but I don't know what to do it. And then this dude comes up with one crutch and one cane. I'm like, <laughs> like, we're talking about it, and this guy comes up. We're like, could be him. Might be God. <laughs> so they go up to minister. Go ahead. So, and then we see this guy. Um, we lay hands on him. We said, what happened? He's like, apparently he got, in a, uh, got hit by a car. He was a car. driving a motorcycle, yeah. and a truck ran, ran over, over him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So... That's having a bad. really hard That's time bad. walking. Had a hard time walking after yeah. that, yeah. It had <laughs> been we, six or eight years. Six yeah, years, I think. Yeah, it was six years. Insane. So we lay hands on him. He immediately starts feeling the presence of God. We're like, what's happening? You know, on a scale of one to ten. Again, he was probably around a six or a seven. Um, all right, we're going to pray for you one more time. We prayed for him again. Um, he's like, wow, I just don't feel any. If he felt the presence of God, and he's like, I don't really feel any pain in my knee area. I'm like, all right, man, hand me your crutches, dude. We're going to see. We're going to check Jesus Let's out. Let's see what's up. Let's see what's up. Let's hand me his up. crutches. The man takes off his hat. His face, his whole entire countenance is completely changed. Like, completely. he's lit up. Come walk over here. The guy just started walking, man. It was, in, it was insane. All pain gone, completely healed. Amen. Amen. That was a pretty good time right there. For me, one really amazing part of the trip was seeing people who have not before operated in these kinds of gifts, getting words of knowledge, screaming fuego on people. And uh, like for me, it's exciting to see how much the team grows. Um, and as much as we were giving out, we were receiving. Like we were just receiving so much to be used by God. And it was really cool to see that. She wasn't terrified after that. Noche de Fuego, she was She's calling going down. She was going in. So, yeah, it was really cool. And so I got to, um, you know, I... I, I did pray for people for physical healing and also emotional healing. And one night we were at um, a cell group where um, Christopher Rajkumar and Andres uh, preached, and it was really good. And, it was a um, church plant. It was a church plant. That's, they, they call it a cell group, but it was a church plant. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of people for a yeah, cell group. Yeah, yeah, it was a church plant. And, um, and a guy, anyway. they have worship, and a guy preached the message, and there was an altar call. That's a, yeah, a and there was plant. an al there was an <laughs> it's altar. A church plant. There was like an altar thing at the yeah. front, like a church. Podium. So a podium. Thank you. Here for you. So um, 
when I got there, now we are, when we go there, Kaleo, one of the Kaleo churches is Kava, and they are, I, I don't know if they're a larger church in the area, but they are our friends. There's Pastor Josue and his daughter and his wife, so we're all friendly with them, and their parents. It's 12 after, honey. Just okay. Uh, their parents are the leaders of the small group, of the, of the church plant. Yeah. And they're, the grandma, she's like this sweet little lady, and she comes up, like kind of, and everyone was helping her up to the front. She said that she had fallen in Walmart earlier that day, and so she was in a lot of pain. That's a store shoulder. they have in Mexico, Walmart. It's, Wa Walmart. Uh, Walmart. So... <laughs> So she had pain in her um, in her her shoulder and her arm, and I prayed for her. Pretty quickly, it was just gone. She's like, ah, "Gloria a Dios." So that was cool. But then she, her, the lady, uh, one of the women comes over to me and says, "Well, she can't see that well either." And so I'm like, "What? How come you can't see?" She's like, "I have glaucoma." I was like, "Oh, that's different than falling in Walmart." Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, um, glaucoma. I, do you see a lot of that healed? I don't. In your I don't have as much experience with that, and not with the pastor's with the pastor's wife. Like I just felt a little pressure. But um, I prayed for her, and as we were beginning to pray for her, she said she felt her eyes were hot. I was like, okay, that's encouraging. So keep going after, keep going after it. And then she would take off her glasses and test, and she's like, mm, poquito, you know, not that much. And then she took her glasses off and looked, and she's like, ah, mejor, mejor, mejor. I was like, yeah. So praise God. Andres is my is my translator. <clears throat> I uh, I would let them know. It was so funny. Um, uh, we <clears throat> um, we go down there and. Um, how do I say this? Uh, they have ideas, but we also have ideas. <laughs> and so they're like, these people are going to translate. It's like, no, actually, Andres is translating. Like, no, 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 they said this. Like, well, let them know Andres is translating, right? And so, like, they would have ideas about worship, and I would let them know that Mikey's going to play the keyboard. They're like, no, 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 he can't play the keyboard. And so, like, their band would play, and I'd be like, all right, they've played long enough. Mikey, come up, <laughs> right? Like, that's, right? But, but Andres did amazing even on his own. I, come on. He did a great job. One of the testimonies in itself is just uh, how great of a pastor that we have. No, 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 no. Just, it's true. No, just, it's true. Just talk to them. I, no, no. <laughs> just talk to them. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Just tell them the testimonies. No, no, no. No, just tell the testimonies. That was actually... Tell the testimonies. No. We love you, pastor. <laughs> tell the testimonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. That's one of the biggest things that touched my heart was what you just mentioned. Um, uh, but before this trip, there was a lot of warfare. And I felt like for me, I was getting a, like a lot of fear and just different things of what could happen. Um, and I remember because I work in customer service, I was talking to somebody who lives on the Mexico border. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to Reynosa, this and this. And they're like, don't go. And they're like, J yesterday, this and this happened. And I'm like, Oh, great. That's good to know. Thanks. But I knew I was supposed to go on the trip. So I'm like, all right, I, I feel the fear, but I know I'm supposed to go. And um, I remember the, the first thing that happened after we left the airport, we got pulled over by the police. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at that moment, every thought that I was like pushing away was coming back. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we are probably going to go to jail. <laughs> Andrew Brunson, oh, Lord, <laughs> like different things. I'm like, OK, but. I remember um, I felt like I had a choice, and I was like, I could en entertain those thoughts, or I can just encounter Jesus, and I feel like God made it so easy to encounter him. Like, I just started singing in the spirit, and something that Pastor preached a few weeks ago was um, how Jesus is King of King and Lord of Lords, and that how when um, John was caught up, he got to peek into heaven, and he could see that was settled. Um, and I felt that same thing, like, it is settled. Like, okay, Amen. we're pulled over. All this is happening. It is settled. And I just was encountering God's peace. Like, it just kept flowing. I'm just singing. I look out the bus window. I see, like, butterflies in the air. And I'm like, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and, like, I just I got, like, these thoughts of hope. Like, imagine if they get called away to go do something else. Imagine, right. like, you know, you're going to be fine. And then, literally, that's what happened. Well, well right? <laughs> what the backstory is, they were waiting for a bribe. Yeah. They pulled us over because there was no license plate on the trailer we had, and they wanted a bribe. And they just, as missionaries, like, we, we, we're not going to bribe you. We were, we're not going to bribe you. Yeah. And so they were kind of discussing, you know, take you to jail. We can do what we need to do. And, uh, and they said no. 
and uh, eventually uh, they wanted a bribe, and we said no, and we wound up praying for the police. The, yeah. the, the missionaries <laughs> wound up praying for the police before we left. But go ahead. Yep, and that, that was everything. They got prayed for, they left, and we just... Yeah, they got called away. <laughs> like in the minute, there's like, oh, there's an accident. You're lucky. We have to leave. And then they, out of nowhere, they left. They said, well, you're free to go, but make sure, make sure you know, you do whatever. So, so we got out of that. No, you got, you got a better testimony than that. Come on. You saw a lot of miracles. Go ahead. Well, uh, all right. The first day when we went to that like witchcraft neighborhood, um, that morning Josh texted me. He said, um, "I feel like God's going to use you to to heal like blind uh, deaf ears." And so I'm like, "Okay, well, let's go." And so I was with Sarah and with Ro, and we go into this shop. This just like regular store, and we're praying for the shop owner there, you know. And then we're blessing her. We're really not getting a leading, you know, just blessing her. I think Sarah had a few visions for her, um, and then we see her daughter, who's maybe like nine or 10 years old, and she's like signing to her mom, like talking to her. And I remembered, I'm like, oh wait, you know, I, don't, I told her directly, I, mean, I don't wanna be disrespectful in any way, I just want you to know, like my friend texted me, saying that God is gonna heal deaf ears. Is it okay if we pray for your daughter? Um, and she asked her, I'm like, could you ask her? And she asked her and she said yes. So we pray for her, and the first time we pray, she begins to hear like a sound in her right ear, just like a noise. And so we're like, okay, something's happening. Let's do it again. We prayed a second time, and nothing happened. But Sarah had a vision of Jesus, like, cupping her ears. So we're like, could you ask your daughter if it's okay for us to cup her ears and pray for her? And Sarah did that. And once she prayed, we kind of just did one of these. And you could see, like, her face. She's just, like, she was smiling. And she does like a sign to her mom, and her mom is smiling, and they're both like talking to each other, like, okay, this something just happened. Hallelujah! <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Something happening? She started hearing? Is that she started hearing. Okay, yeah. well, that's a good end to the story there. Yeah. Give it for Andres, everybody. <laughs> Brianna. Hi, guys. Come on over here, Brianna. This is your first mission trip, yeah? Yep. You don't do a lot of ministry at this, this point, right? Yep. Yeah. And so what were you, what were you thinking was going to happen on this trip? What were you expecting? Um, I don't even know, to be honest. Um, I went, and I was praying that God would, that I would leave, and I would just be completely different. Okay. And so the things that I saw there, I was like, wow, this is incredible that God could not only move and use you if you allow him to, not just here, but in other places too. So that was pretty awesome. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. You had a good time? Yep, an incredible time. Excellent. So tell us, give us a testimony. So um, we were on the way to this market, and we were praying about words of knowledge. And so the first color I got was red. And then the second color was orange. And I was like, God, are you giving me the colors of the rainbow here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and so um, the second word of knowledge I got was orange. And I was with Pastor and a few other people. And so um, Pastor was like, dig deeper. What does that mean? What does that mean? And um, when I, once I like, dug deeper, God was like, his knee, a knee, orange in the color. The color orange and a knee. And so this guy was passing by, and he was kind of, like, hobbling and stuff. And so Pastor was like, Brianna, what it, did you get anything else? And so as the guy was passing by, Pastor was like, I feel like it's this guy. And he was wearing This guy had a, the orangest hat yes, you ever saw in your life. the like, you have ever seen. Like it was this, really bright. It's like, like an orange miss that it. you can't find in nature. Yep. It was so bright. It was so and bright. Light was bending toward the hat. Mm -hmm. It was so bright orange. I was like... Do you have anything more about the yeah, orange yeah. by any chance? Orange, it was, it was in crazy. Because it wasn't like colors that you would typically find. No. So, yeah, it wasn't colors you would typically find. So I was like, God, are you sure? And he's like, just do it. And so yeah, um, <laughs> and so um, we prayed for him, and his knee felt completely better. Okay, so there's a guy with an orange knee. Yes. You're like, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna rush right through yes. this, and then you're going to be yes. done. <laughs> this is going to be one of the testimonies. They're like 20 minutes of build up, and then, oh, and then he was healed. And then like, no, we need to. Yeah. So we're in His, the market. Yes, we're in the market. There was a man with a bright orange hat on. Yes, and there was a man. And you did what? We prayed over him. Wait a minute. Did you talk to him first or you just went and prayed for him? No, we talked to him okay. and we what asked him okay, yeah. if he had any pain. And he said yes. And his knees. And you had a word of knowledge about? His hat being orange. It and, wasn't specifically his hat. And, and his knee. Okay. And so here's a man with an orange hat mm -hmm. with a bad knee. Yes. And so you felt like this could be God. Yes. Okay. And so you went ahead and you began to pray? 
Yes, and um, his knee got better, and he started, he like, he like was bending his knees, and his knees was completely better. It was really cool, guys, honestly. Really good. Yeah, really good. All right, you have to give me another one. You have to tell the story um, better, though. There was, let me try to think. That was really good. Oh, there was this one lady, she had a son, and um, we were at, it was the last day when we had the service and we were playing, praying for people with, um, that couldn't hear in their ears. And she couldn't hear out of her right one. Yeah, out of her right one. And we prayed over her and she could hear. She didn't want to tell her testimony, but it was really cool. Like she stood there and you could see in her face that she could not believe that she could actually hear. And we're kind of asking her, are you sure you could hear? And she's like, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. <laughs> Is that the one who didn't want to come forward and give testimony? Yes, that was crying? the one. Yeah. yeah, and she started crying when she went up there because she was just in disbelief that, like, you know, she could hear out, that of, her she could hear out of her ear. It was really cool. <laughs> now, let me, let me, hold on. Now, now, now listen. <clears throat> so if you go on your first mission trip and, 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 and deaf ears begin to open, mm -hmm. you might think that's normal. No, it's not. And so you'll tell the testimony as un as exciting as she just gave. <laughs> But point. I promise you, if you ask Brianna about this in 15 years, that story's going to be a lot longer. Mm -hmm. There's going to be tarrying involved. There's going to be words of knowledge and doves. There's going to be angels. And when I heard it, my spirit, man, a lot more details will come into the story down the road. But for now, this I pray for a getting. woman who couldn't hear, and then she could hear, and she was in disbelief. Yep. But there you go. Buenos días. Hey, hola. ¿Cómo estás? Let me tell you something. something. So Chris, Chris, Christopher is from South Florida, right? Yeah. Like, well, he's from here. So if you're from South Florida, you speak some Spanglish, right? Yeah. Like, everybody speaks some Spanglish in South poquito. Florida, yeah. right? Yeah. And so Christopher can butcher Spanglish as, as, as good as anybody else. But he would purposely oh, yeah, yeah. mispronounce Spanish words so people wouldn't talk to him in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's how you learn it that's here. That's how you learn it. <laughs> That's how you get them to just stop Hola, crying. Gracias. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how I was talking. <laughs> wow. Welcome to Revival Life, everybody. Hey, man. Uh, just real quick, Brianna's testimony. If it's the same lady, she, her both ears, couldn't, she couldn't hear. It wasn't just the right one. And then um, she was giving the testimony, and it was ministering to her son because her son needed healing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He had like a like a burden, like of guilt and shame on his chest. And his mom got touched, so. Yeah, and he heard it, and it was it was a, it was so much. And that peace. opened his heart. Yeah, it was opening up his heart. Yeah, and then so okay, uh, that was no, one meant, of my. I meant tell them instead of me. Uh, yeah, excuse me. Thing. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he so his heart because he heard oh, it opened up his heart, and he like, uh, it, you know, because we were praying for him and just uh, for him to receive, and just saying he, he, for a while he wasn't receiving anything, and then he started to hear from his mom and and um, hear the testimony of how she was healed, and there was just this this burden and this 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 weight that lifted off, and he just felt so much peace and felt so much joy, and he was like. It, like, at first, he wasn't feeling anything. He was just like, eh, whatever. But at the end, he's like, keep praying for me. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for me. Like, he was just like, Amen. he was just wanted so much more. Amen. Amen. So, uh, first one is, is that Pastor and uh, Sarah Pagano were preaching fire one night. It was really good. It was so good. It was powerful. It was just, woo! I was getting rocked. And... Um, they had a um, word of knowledge, or excuse me, they were just saying God's going to give out new gifts. And one of the, one of the gifts was his um, spirit of discernment. So um, a guy and his cousin come up, and they're just crying out to God, wanting this, wanting this. And they're just crying they out. They wanted a gift of discernment. They wanted they to see angels to. They wanted to see, yeah, they wanted to see angels specifically. And so, so they're just crying out, wanting God. And so I was able to pray for both of them, and um, they, they fall out. And I was like, hallelujah, that's great. <laughs> The cousin gets up and is able to see angels. Come and on. he's like, he's like, whoa, this is so good. Starts telling his other cousin. And his co the other cousin gets up, can't see a thing. And he gets bitter and angry. And so he, he they, and they both leave the service. And that's all. No, I <laughs> and, and so, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. And so, uh, so a couple days go by. 
and uh, I was able to speak at um, a cell group, like at a, a, a No, you, a did. Home. you preached at a, a church plant. That's what you did. I preached at a church plant. That's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did. Hallelujah. It was, it was good. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and you're not, so. You're not, wait a you're not telling that story, are you? The story from the cell group, are you? Yeah. About the house. No, no. The no, oh, the, God. The short story? No, no, no. Christopher Rajkumar <laughs> earned a medal of the longest illustration from a message yeah. that you've ever heard in your entire right, life. Stop me if you heard this, Pastor. No, but no, <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's inside joke. Go ahead. All right. So anyways, um, that guy, the, the cousin, comes up, and uh, after uh, we're like, okay, um, God's going to give out um, healing and just uh, prayer uh, over their hearts and love, and God, God's going to pour out right now. And the cousin who was left bitter and angry came up to the altar, and he was just crying out to God. And just, you know, just praying to God and repenting. And uh, there were translators around sporadically praying, for, uh, praying with other people, but I didn't have a translator. And even though I look Spanish, I didn't know what to pray. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up to the guy having no idea that he's upset, having no idea that he wanted to see angels. I just lay my hands on him, and I just feel this, like, weight of the Lord for love and just... Just so much love that God had for him. I just wrap my arms around him, and when I wrap my arms around him, he starts to burst into tears, and he could just he could only stand for a few seconds, and then he falls out in the, in the Lord. And I said, "That's great. I'm going to the bathroom now." <laughs> and uh, while I'm in the bathroom, he gets up and gives a testimony, and I'm like, "Hey, I know that guy." And you heard, <laughs> you heard the yeah, voice. Yeah, I heard the voice. I was like, "I know that guy." Yeah, he he got up already, and so he's crying, tears crying. He's like, he said. That a couple of days ago, he was crying out to see angels, and he wanted to see angels so bad. And he said, when he got up, he saw four angels in that church, and he was able to minister. And just, I mean, just ministering to him. Uh, and then one of the angels was able to just uh, go into one of the rooms that uh, someone else was in. It was just, it was an amazing testimony. He saw what he saw and how it was just blessing him. It was just powerful because God ministered to him. Yeah. When there was no translator. Come on. You know, like we didn't have to speak the same language in order for God's gift to come poured out. And I think that was so powerful. I thought that, I thought that just rocked me so much. I was like, Jesus, that, that was it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Can I have time for one more? Quick one. Yeah. Go Quick. for it. Okay. So we're at the market. You have to right? tell better than Brianna though. Okay. So we're at the market, right? And we went. <laughs> and so while we're at the market, because um, we, we broke up into groups, uh, I was with Sylvie and Memo, one of the translators, uh, a Mexican missionary there. And we go out and we see this guy in a wheelchair. And he's, um, he's uh, I don't know the, the PC word for uh, little people. Is that it? Like he, yeah, he's a little person. Yeah. Uh, so he's a little person, but he has regular arms. So like he is like arms, so he can he can like do like wheel like he can push his own wheelchair, and um, so we go up, we see this guy, and we're like, okay, we're gonna pray for him. Nothing like I didn't have faith for his legs growing out or like his his like torso becoming right. you know normal size or anything like that. So I, we just pray peace because that's what that that's what we had faith for, and and so we're praying over him. We're just praying the, the fire and peace, and he just feels it. He feels like this the burden lifting. He feels like fire of God on him. He's just like God. That was so powerful. He's like guys, I really needed this because he's he's like begging for money because he can't really work because he can't stand. He doesn't he doesn't have any legs. And so he's like, he's like, thank you guys. This is so good. Can you pray for someone else that has uh, that has really bad pain in their in their leg? And we're, and we're like, okay. So he wheels us across. Like he's like wheeling himself, and we follow him like across the street. And we're like, oh, okay. I guess we're just going with him. And so we start following him. And there's this one lady who's selling out on the corner of the street, just selling uh, limes and stuff. And so we go to her, and we're like, hey, can we pray for you? Uh, we were able to pray for your friend here. He, he felt the peace of God, and we just believe that God's going to heal you. And she's like, yeah, and she was telling the story on how, like, she was in one of those transportation buses, and she was trying to get out at the stop, and they wouldn't stop for her, and she fell out, and then they kind of just went on by. And so she had this great pain from all the way here, all the way down to her feet. Like, she couldn't, she could barely walk. It was like this real bad pain. And so... 
So we're like, okay, yeah, let's pray for that. You know, I don't know. And then, and then God, uh, um, so we all started laying hands on her. And then she was like, she, she felt this amazing heat and warmth that just came from all over and just wrapped around her leg. And, we're, uh, and we were praying, and we are just praying for healing. And then she's just like, she's like, yeah, this is gone. It's gone. And it's just totally gone. And we're just praying that fire. And then God's just praying. We're praying more over her because we're feeling like she, she has some stuff in her heart. And we just pray, and she, she's just asking for forgiveness. She's just thanking, thanking the Lord. She's just rejoicing with God because of, of everything that was happening. So it was an amazing time. I was doing great things, and uh, those are that. Is that, That's just a fraction of what you saw, right? Yes. That was a fraction. A fraction. Those are the ones. You can have him over for dinner. He'll tell you the rest. Hey, Rumi. What did it do? Club 104. Club 104 all day. Club I gotta 104. Keep it here. Keep it here. I can't be talking too loud. So Sarah Pagano. Can I say something real quick about Sarah Pagano? Yep. She's not here. Let's do it. We can she say is a monster. That yeah. lady is a beast. She's watching. You're a beast. Yeah, you're a beast. My goodness. So... <laughs> Sarah, she, I was just I was just happy to just get to minister to who she, whoever she was ministering to. I was just like, yeah, go ahead, get him, Sarah. <laughs> she was she was operating in some stuff. I was just like, yes, do it, Jesus. So she had a vision of Jesus holding people's ears. So which, every which time, you telling? no, I'm, no, I'm okay, just I'm ahead. just saying go overall. Ahead, go, 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 go. So anytime Sarah Pagano would go up to somebody who is deaf and would put her hands on her ears like this those people's ears would just burst open. So I was just like, oh my goodness. She would see Jesus do it. She would do it and they would get healed. And I was like, girl, you such a beast. And it was so cool to see. It was so cool to see. So I, we saw lots of miracles. They're like, it lot was of stuff. so many miracles. But I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I saw um, that weren't miracles. It was just Jesus encountering they people. They were miracles, just not physical. Oh yeah, they, yeah. They were just not physical. They were like heart stuff. So um, one of the girls... So I'm playing at this church. I got to play at this church really quickly with, with Mikhail. And so I get down, and I'm sitting next to this girl while pastor's preaching. And uh, pastor keeps going up to her because she's getting rocked, like, right beside me. And I was like, okay, go ahead, girl, get it. And so we start ministering. We start ministering to people, and it's like the end of the service. It's the very end of the service, and she starts talking to pastor. And um, pastor's like, yo, Mikey, come here, come here. I was like, oh. That's exactly how I said it. Yeah. That's exactly. Come, come here. Like, yo. That's and exactly. so <laughs> I run over. I run over to her. And I'm like, hi. And Pastor's like, yo, she plays. He doesn't say yo. But <laughs> she plays piano. And so then he tells the story of how I sucked at piano. And I was like, oh, that, that helped my ego a little bit. And he was like, and then God... I had somebody pray for me for supernatural abilities, and then I started hearing, like, melodies from heaven. So he was like, pray that over her. So I started praying that over her, and I just felt like God was really, really touching her, but I felt like there was a block. Like, she couldn't, like she couldn't get it yet. Like, there was a process that she had to go through. And I was like, um, does she need to forgive anybody? So I'm talking to Drace, and Drace starts walking her through forgiveness, and all of a sudden, pastor comes over. And so then, now, we're three people are ministering to this girl, and she starts bawling, crying. And, yeah. and um, so... Pastor's like, oh, so is there anybody that she needs to forgive? She's at first like, nah, I don't need to forgive anybody. And it's like, mm, do you though? And so, <laughs> and so all of a sudden she starts thinking about it and she says her boyfriend. And so then we didn't ask any questions. We just say, yeah, go ahead and start forgiving him. So all of a sudden she starts bawling even more. Now she's like starting to walk through the process of forgiveness. And so I was like, uh-oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then pastor's like, so do you see Jesus? And she's like, no, I don't see Jesus. And he's like, look again. And she's like, <laughs> okay. So she starts looking again, and then she sees Jesus. And he's like, what is Jesus doing? And she's like, he's opening his arms to me. And, then, um, and so then he's like, what is he doing now? He's, I think she said, he's hugging me. And so all of a sudden, she starts getting wrapped up in the love of Jesus. And she just... She, was, she started getting blasted, and I was like, it's my turn now. So right after that, she used to getting blasted by Jesus, and then I'm like, okay, so Jesus is going to release it over you now. Jesus is going to release it over you now. So um, I start praying for her hands, and she starts, like, trembling. And so then I just felt the fire of God fall on her. So after Jesus encountered her, then all of a sudden, I think, I believe, the gift was poured out yeah. that was over me. So now this, I want to hear the report of how she starts playing Come piano because— I was pretty excited for her. So that was one. That was one. That was one. That was one.
One of my favorite times, this is, oh my goodness, one of my favorite times, we were in an intercession meeting, and so after the intercession meeting, we're, we're, everybody's praying for each other, and we're praying for the Cleo team and all that, and so then um, I'm just running around praying for whoever, and I'm like just tag teaming with other people, so I'm just like, if somebody's getting prayed for, I'm going to go pray for them too. Then all of a sudden, I see Pastor praying for this girl in the back, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to go do that too. So I, I go behind her, and so, oh my goodness, yeah, so... Huh. Ha. 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 <laughs> this is my favorite one ha. of all time. So, pastor's praying, and uh, whew, this girl is like, she's like, I don't, I don't really feel anything. I don't really feel anything. And uh, pastor's like, do you see Jesus? She's like, no, not really, not really. And so he's like, okay, who do you need to forgive? And she was like, uh, uh, and all of a sudden she thinks about it. She said her dad. The moment she said her dad, she's gone. Like, she's bawling, crying. And so... Um, she starts forgiving her dad. She starts walking through forgiveness of her dad. And um, then pastor's like, okay, after she forgives her dad, pastor's, pastor goes, okay, so now what do you see Jesus doing? And she's like, he's walking with me at a river. And pastor's like, what? He's walking with you at a river. Okay, what else? And so then uh, she goes, now he's carrying me around the river. He's carrying me around the river. And then, and then he goes, okay, so what else is he doing? What is he saying to you? And then he put her down. And then he said, I will never leave you, even if it looks like I'm gone. Even if it looks like I'm not here, I'm not going to leave you. So all of a sudden she starts, she starts bawling, crying. And he disappears. And so then she's like, I just feel the love of God is right here. She's like, he's gone. It's still here. So she was getting, she was getting rocked by the presence of Jesus. Like she encountered God. And after that moment, I know her life is not going to be the same. It didn't make any sense at the time because... Jesus was with her in heaven in the vision, yeah. and then he said, it looks like I'm going to walk away, but I'll yeah. be with you. And yes. then he walked away in the vision, and she opened her eyes, and he was there with her. Oh, my goodness. And it, uh, it was like, <laughs> he was loving on her. 